Recall that Z8 is the set of integers, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, where we consider the operation to be modulo 8. And we initially talked about addition modulo 8, and I can make a table for addition modulo 8. So we can see, for instance, that something like 4 plus 5, which would be 9, but 9 modulo 8 is 1. And then we also have multiplication modulo 8, and we can make a table for that so that we can see, for instance, that something like 4 times 3, which would normally be 12, uh, but 12 modulo 8 is 4. Now, one thing we noticed is that addition modulo 8 formed a group. If we look at this uh, table right here, this is a group table, and it meets the conditions for a group where it's closed, associative, there's an identity element, and an inverse. But multiplication modulo 8 has a problem. So our identity element here would be 1, and we can see that kind of meets the conditions of uh, what would be an identity element for a group. But not every element has an inverse. Like, for instance, 2. Well, 2 times, well, nothing here gives us 1. And so that's a problem. Now, is there a way we could turn multiplication modulo 8 into a group? Well, let's see. We need to get rid of the offending elements here. So, well, the 0 is a problem because nowhere, 0 times uh, anything here, nowhere is going to give us a 1. So we kind of want to get rid of that. So maybe we could get rid of this and, and get rid of this. And then how about, uh, well, we want to keep 1. That's our identity. 2 is a problem. So we can get rid of this, and we can get rid of this. And um, 3 seems to be OK. 4 is not OK. I don't see a 1 anywhere there. And so we'll get rid of that. 5 is OK, I think. Uh, how about 6? Nope, 6 is no good. Get rid of that and that. And 7 seems to be OK. So it looks like if we limit ourselves to 1, 3, 5, and 7, Maybe this is a group. So let's check this out a little further. So I'm going to look at this uh, from a different perspective here. Let's consider the set of integers m that meet the following two conditions. So condition 1, uh, 1 is less than or equal to m, which is less than 8. And condition 2 is going to be that m and 8 are relatively prime. So relatively prime, that means that the greatest common divisor of m and 8 should be, if they're relatively prime, 1. OK, so that's my condition that I want to look at here. And so let's see what integers meet that condition. Well, I have the GCD of 8 and 1, and that seems to work. I have the GCD of 8 and 2, and the greatest common divisor of 8 and 2 is 2. So they are not relatively prime and the GCD of 8 and 3, that seems to work, that gives 1. How about the GCD of 8 and 4? Well, 8 and 4, again, these are not relatively prime because the greatest common divisor is 4. How about the GCD of 8 and 5? So if I look at 8 and 5, yep, those are relatively prime, that works. And the GCD of 8 and 6, nope, that's 2, that's no good. And then lastly, I have the GCD of 8 and 7. They are relatively prime. That works. So these two conditions here, uh, I seem to have narrowed down this uh, set of integers to the 1, 3, 5, and 7. So I'm going to call that something. I'm going to call it U8. So these are the things that meet these two conditions here, where I'm looking at the number 8 here. And that consisted of 1, 3, 5, and 7. And those are the numbers that we saw in the previous slide. And so now I want to show that u of 8, which I'm going to call the units modulo 8, is a group under multiplication modulo 8. OK, so we have u of 8 is 1, 3, 5, and 7. And the binary operation is multiplication modulo 8. So let's construct a group table. So here I have 1, 3, 5, and 7 laid out. And I know that 1x is my identity here. So 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 5 is 7, 1 times, I'm sorry, 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 7 is 7. And then I can put the same things here. Um, 3 times 3 is 9, but modulo 8, remember, would be 1. 
5 times 3 is 15, but again, remember we're talking modulo 8, and that would be 7. And I'm just going to fill in the rest here, but you can see how this works. And then I have a 7 here, a 1 here, and a 3, and this is a 5. This must be um, a 3, and this must be our 1. Okay, so now let's check the group properties. So first we have closure. Is this closed? And it looks like I have all 1s, 3s, 5s, and 7s in here, so yes, I would say this is closed. How about associativity? Well, um, U of 8 here, that's a subset of Z8, and I know Z8 is associative, so this should also be associative, so that seems to work. How about an identity element? Well, we already showed that we have an identity element. Remember, our identity element was 1, so sure, that seems to work. And inverses. Okay, so I should check all these. Does one have an inverse? Well, it's its own inverse. How about three? Does three have an inverse? Three times three ends up being one, so that seems to say that three is its own inverse. How about five? Does five have an inverse? Uh, five times five, that's one, so five is its own inverse. And how about seven? Does seven have an inverse? Well, seven times seven is one. Seven is its own inverse, so yes, inverses do seem to work here. And it does appear that we do have a group. In fact, we can say that U of 8 is an abelian group, meaning that it satisfies the commutative property. In this case, we're talking about multiplication, remember? Um, so this, uh, if we look at the group table, we can also tell it's abelian. We see that it's symmetric about this diagonal here. Um, so U of 8 is an abelian group. So let's try to generalize this idea. And we'll make this a theorem. For a given integer n greater than 1, let m be an integer such that 1 is less than or equal to m, which is less than n, and the greatest common divisor of n and m equals 1. In other words, they're relatively prime. Then the set of all integers m forms a group. And we're going to denote that as u of n, and that's called the units modulo n. So let's try and show this. And I have to show the four group properties. It uh, has closure, associativity, identity, and inverses. Okay, so here's the theorem again, and I'm going to do a sketch of a proof. I'm not going to do a formal proof because I think you can get the formal proof pretty easily from the sketch. So we'll start with closure. Is this closed? So how does this work? Well, let's say that we have A and B that are in the group of units mod n. And so I have to show, I have to show that if that's true, then a times b is also in this group of units mod n. So that would show closure. So how could I do this? Well, I know that um, if, if we go back to the notation that we used when we talked about um, z sub n, the integers modulo n, because uh, remember u sub n is really just a subset of z sub n, then I know that when I have uh, the equivalence classes here of a times b multiplied together, that that's the same thing as a times b. We saw that before with uh, the integers mod n. That has to be true of the units mod n as well. And if a and b are in the units, then I know that uh, the GCD of, we'll say, a first here and n, in this case, equals 1. And I also know that the GCD of b and n equals 1. And so to show that A and B are in the units, I would need to show that the GCD of A times B and N equals 1. And so this is what I would have to show here. And it turns out we've already shown something like this. If you look at the video that is on relatively prime integers, I had this theorem right here. Let A, B, and C be integers. Suppose that A and B are relatively prime and that A and C are relatively prime then A and B, C are relatively prime. So I have this in terms of A, B, and C, but you see the basic idea holds if I just kind of shuffle the letters around here. A and B are relatively prime and A and C. So N is really playing the role of A here. If I think of this as N, I'll write a little N above it. So I have N everywhere, I have an A. And then I have uh, the A and the B those are really the, the roles of the B and the C. So I guess I'll keep B as B and just rewrite it above. And C here is really my A. So you just kind of have to transpose everything here. And then we have a B and a C. Well, it's a B and then an A. I guess I'll write the A next to it over here. And so you see that this is really the same thing that we've already shown. 
Okay, next up we have associativity. And associativity is, again, pretty easy if we remember that u sub n is really a subset of z sub n. And we've seen that z sub n, the set of integers modulo n, uh, is associative under this operation of multiplication mod n. So that means that u sub n here for the same reason would be associative. So I'm going to say yes, we have associativity for this one. Okay, next up we have identity. And so we saw that one acted as our identity element. So we know for uh, one thing that we do have one in the units mod n here because uh, we are looking at integers m such that one is less than or equal to m. Okay, we have the or equal to. And we also know that the GCD of one and n is always going to be one. And so that is in the set. And furthermore, we know that if you take anything else in the set, say A, and multiply it by the equivalence class containing one, that's the same thing as A times one, which is the same thing as A. And so we have an identity element, and it is in the set, and it acts like an identity, so we're good to go. And now we come to the hardest one to show, and that's inverses. And so I'm not going to show this in great detail here, but I'll give you the general idea. So here's how this would work. Let's suppose that I have uh, some element A that's in this set of units. Then I would need to show that, so this is what I have to show here. I would have to show then that there exists in this uh, set of units here. We'll say, um, Oh, I'll use the letter B. There exists a B in this set of units such that, so what does it mean to be an inverse here? That would mean that when I um, look at A and B multiplied together, that they are congruent to one modulo N. So that's what I would have to show. And so to do this, you can go back to what it means to say that A is in the set of units. A being in the set of units implies that the GCD, the greatest common divisor of A and N is one. And then that implies that there exists, and this goes back to the definition of what it means to say that uh, the GCD of two numbers is something else. There exists integers, and I'll use, uh, how about B and C? So I'll use B because I want to eventually use this as my inverse here, and then some other integer C. Uh, and these things are integers. There exist two integers such that. And we know that this means there's a linear combination here such that, and I'll say A times B plus N times C equals one. One because I have a one here. Okay, and so what does that mean? So that means, I'll go over here now. So that means that n times c is 1 minus ab. That's just a little bit of algebra there, okay? And then that means that negative n times c equals ab minus 1. And what does that mean? Well, that means if I rewrite it, ab minus 1 is equal to, and I'm going to write it as minus c or negative c times n. And the reason I'm doing that is because now it's in the form that allows me to say that n divides a times b minus 1. So this is some uh, integer here multiplying the n, and I know that's the condition that I have to say that n would divide a times b minus 1. And then once I'm there, I can just say that a times b is congruent to 1 mod n, and that's what I was trying to show. So that's part of it. Uh, the other part that you would need to show, which I'm not going to do here, is to actually show that uh, this is true, that this element B is in this set of units. Uh, I'll leave that to you, but it does work, and indeed we do have inverses. Okay, so now that we know that we have a group here, let's look at one more example. How about U10? So U10, well, we can start with Z10, and that would be 0 through 9 here. And the GCD of 10 and M equals 1 is the condition that we're interested in. So we want to figure out what works for that condition. And if you think about it, we have our identity 1 again, uh, 3 will work, 7 will work, and 9 will work. And so we can make a group table for this. We know that we have our identity element 1, so I can say this is 1, 3, 7, and 9, and 1, 3, 7, and 9. And then 3 times 3 is 9, 
and so 9 mod 10 is still 9. 7 times 3 is 21, but 21 mod 10 is 1. And then 9 times 3 is 27, 27 mod 10 is 7. So you see how this works. Again, I'll go through and just put in the rest of these. We have a 1, a 9, a 3, a 7, a 3, and a 1. And so we have another example here of the units modulo n, this time where we have u of 10.